in the name of Jesus. This is our goal that we might stand before you and receive a commendation. Well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Strengthen us in our work with you to sustain this goal in mind every day of our living lives in Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. God bless you in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2. Beginning from verse number 12. So in our assessment of the texture of a theme, the texture of ministry, the texture of government, the texture of a theme, we must probe into the source. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible says, Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belia. They knew not the law. That's a proof. That's an inquiry into the source. There was a need to press beyond the identity that was linked to Eli because there were manifestations in their lives that were contrary. Then a microscopic view of their true texture traced them to Belia. Hallelujah. And there's a quiet comment there, quiet commentary. Huh? What? You are, you are, you are afraid. What's the quiet commentary there? They knew not the Lord. Could it be that not everyone that claims to be speaking for Jesus that knows not? Could it be that uh, not everyone that claims to speak for Jesus knows Jesus? Could it be that not everyone that stands to represent Jesus knows Jesus? And in this terrible day, we will need to have utensils by which we probe things, by which we test things, so that we will not be victims of the policy of mixture that Satan intends to implement in our time, where we have a situation that is descriptive of what is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, beginning from verse 24. There is a matter in the book of Ezekiel chapter 22, beginning from verse 24, that we may need to avoid, and that is what necessitates the need to probe further. Are you with me? It says, Son of man, say unto her, this is our challenge. Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. Next verse. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Now, this is an activity. It's a growing development in society. And God is bringing the attention of the prophet to this growing development. Now, this is a, this, these are the order of things. First of all, there is a case of a lion devouring a prey. There's a case of intimidation 
There's a case of exploitation that is going on. That's one of the things that God alerted the attention of the prophet about. Hallelujah. A reality of intimidation and extortion and exploitation is like a roaring lion. You know, when a lion roars, the objective is basically to advance intimidation. He said, that reality is found among my people. There is exploitation, there is intimidation. He said, they have devoured souls. So many people's life have been plundered. So many people have been brought to a point where they don't want to have anything to do with the pastor anymore. You must understand that the emphasis of the spirit of Baal is to turn the hearts of men from God. And how that happens is that uh, people that are victims of this policy of darkness, of exploitation, intimidation, first-hand victims of these realities normally vow never to have anything to do with church anymore. Whenever you see that a man's heart is turned from God, it is the spirit called Baal that is at work. So there's a description of several items here. So we just mentioned one, which is intimidation and exploitation. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and the precious things. So there's financial malpractice and extortion. And all, every precious thing for that matter, like virginity and so many precious things have been taken. Hallelujah. And there is this accompaniment of intimidation that is advanced alongside. Because I've met with people before and they were told that if you tell anybody, you will die. Hallelujah. And they have made her many widows. Many mourning people in the midst thereof. 26. Are you there in 26? Where's my... He said, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things and, and, and have not put, they have put no difference between the holy and the profane. This is the mixture I'm talking about. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. So part of what God is trying to achieve in our time is to orchestrate policies that will generate a difference. There is something called separation. And from the very book of Genesis chapter 1, you will see how God separated the day from the night. It took an effort of God to separate the day from the night. He said, this kind of people, they operate effectively when there is no difference between the holy and the profane, when the demarcation is not wide enough, so they just play around in the midst. The day the difference is made and it becomes clearer what is profane, it becomes clearer what is holy, you will find out that a lot of these dishonest activities will begin to cease. So this is the situation that God is attempting to reverse, a situation of mixture, where there's a mixture of what looks like holy and a mixture of the profane. So you say, okay, it's not altogether bad. It had a good side. So let us talk about the good side and forget about the bad side. And there are always agencies of compromise and people that want to intimidate righteous voices so that they will not comment on the anomaly. But it was God himself that drew the attention of the prophet to this situation. 
And it is our responsibility to ensure in this day, since we know that what is on the mind of God for this season is to bring a demarcation between that which is holy and that which is profane, that which is clean and that which is unclean, who labor in this direction as long as it is a present revelation position in the spirit. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. All right, so you understand what I'm talking about now. So you can now see how that the Bible reveals that the sons of Eli were sons of what? Of Belia. And meanwhile, that's the first time in the Bible that we are seeing that a set of people have two fathers. The understanding of these young men in the light of their connection to Eli was not adequate basis to define the activities. So a more advanced probe had to take place. And then it was now revealed that their source was what? Belia. Are you there? So we can actually go beyond the miracles. We can go beyond the breakthrough. We can go beyond the things that attract people's attention and probe the source. For instance, are you with me? Are you with me? For instance, you will notice that um, God asked Moses to speak to the rock so that the rock can produce water. But Moses, in disobedience, in rebellion, he struck the rock. And water still came out. If your means of evaluating is results, which is basically our means now. Moses had results, but the root of the results was what? Rebellion. We need to probe beyond the weakness of our doctrine today. Because our doctrine is shallow, it is weak and wicked. We need to travel beyond it to find the source point of things. What was it that was responsible, that is the um, undercurrent behind the results that we see. Only prophetic people are ready to go through the trouble of trying to find out the source and the undercurrent of the manifestations that are seen. If there is any generation where we need to administer very effective probes to find out what the source of everything is, it is this one. Because somehow our perception of the teaching of prosperity is about making it fast, making money fast, becoming relevant fast, getting more likes on Facebook fast. So that's our perception in our generation. That's our perception of what it means to walk in divine prosperity. And in the light of that perception, we have we have um, um, standards of measurement in light of that departure from a balanced position of truth. For instance, if you came into this place trekking, uh, it is likely that my generation will see you as someone that is not intimate with God. Because the ultimate manifestation of, of the, or the proof of the fact that you have a walk with God will be evidence in the kind of stuff you drive, the kind of house you live in, the conditions under which you operate will be suggestive of the fact that the hand of God is upon your life. That's the weak and the wicked gospel that I'm talking about. Because it is possible for you to get all these things without God. And you know we have people in this nation that do not subscribe to our God. They are better in these matters than even the ones that preach it. This is a time of sober reflection where we need to get back and check our doctrine, check our lives, and know the things that we have believed and pursued, and then compromise it with the Word of God. And that's the diligent job we want to do in a measure this morning, because it is possible for the sons of Eli, the children of a priest, to be drawing their essence from Belia. Are you there with me? Yeah. Somebody was trying to invite me, and he was, the person was sending to connect me for the invitation. 
This was what he told him. He said, I need that man. Bring that man quickly. Um, his basis of wanting to invite me was that uh, we were visible on social media. And um, when I come to his place, there's a likelihood that uh, the crowd will come. But he didn't stop there. He said, but his fear is that if I come now and I don't know how he raised this place, I will now destroy the things that he's building. That, that's his fear. So, is that really an invitation? Was that an invitation? So there were things that have been used to build the place that I'm not aware of. And there's a likelihood that those things will suffer loss if by any means I accept the invitation. Meanwhile, he was still extending the invitation. Now, there are a lot of principles that have been used to build things. How many of you have read this book called 48 Laws of Power? 48 Laws of Power. But, okay, how many of you have seen it? No, okay, there's a book like that. Now, if you read the back of the book, it tells you it, it's source. The principles that powered the compilation. It says that the book is a documentation of amoral principles. If you are a scientist and we say asexual, we mean that it is lacking sex organs. Are you there? So if we say amoral, it means it is lacking in morality. The thing about spirituality is that you cannot be spiritual and not be morally sound, but morality is not, a, is not the same as spirituality. You can be moral and not be spiritual, but you cannot be spiritual and not be morally sound. And the guy is saying that the undercurrent that drives this compilation is that it is amoral. The principles of morality have been put aside because the objective of this book is results. Now, in the last six years, how many of you have seen that caption as a, an annual conference theme for ministries? Results. Huh. Hallelujah. You see, when we begin prophetic probes, some things that people that lack discernment will rejoice about are the things that others might weep on. And what we intend to establish, like I said, is to purely demarcate the profane from the holy. Are you with me? I was working at the depot one of those days, and some sons of the bond woman that felt um, I was an interesting fellow came to me and gave me a proposal of how we can run some business in the oil, oil sector. And uh, they came with the figures, they came because they do it, that's what they do. So they came with the figures, they came with um, the analysis, they came with the percentages. And if you look at it on paper, it's something that is interesting. You want to be involved. The margin is good. And I am a regulator. I was a regulator at that time. So if I use the weight of my office to influence this thing, it will even give us better margins. So the fact that the margins were good was paramount. But you see, when we were done with the statistical aspect, the analysis aspect, they now said, we need to go to North Bank. If you have been to, Makodi is divided into two parts. The River Benway divides the city. So we have the North Bank and we have the South Bank. So the North Bank is more, um, is the camp of the sons of the bond woman. So they say we need to visit North Bank and there is a ritual that we need to conduct that involves a ram. It is that ritual that we guarantee that we are committed to each other because man is a creature that can sway to the left and to the right. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the principle that they brought to support the statistics was not consistent 
with the principles that prevail in the kingdom that I subscribe to. So ultimately, the principles you operate are pointers to the kingdom that you function in, the kingdom that you subscribe to. And this, uh, this matter is critical. So I told them that I'm not opting out of the business proposal because the figures are not good and because it is not practicable. But this aspect of the deal that involves a ram. How many of you have attended Lagos Business School? Did I tell you about the ram? OK, you, you have. The, the, were you lectured on the ram dimension of business realities? Ram. So we'll take a ram and then we'll swear, we'll put the blood. Ah! The moment we begin to subscribe to that principle, it means that we have taken advantage of the principles of the kingdom of darkness to advance what we call good. But you see, that good is a kind of good that lacks God. Because there was a good in the Garden of Eden, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there was no God in it. So if your analysis is based on good and bad, you are wrong. Because there is a good that is not God. You know, a time came when we had this slogan in the body of Christ, if it is good, then it is God. You will use that slogan to kiss Satan. Because there's a good that is not God. Do you realize when that rich young ruler came to Jesus? What did he say to him? He said, good master. What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus rebuked him instantly. And in his rebuke, what he said was that there is none good but God. Jesus is trying to qualify the good that the guy is talking about because Jesus knows that humankind can have a perception of good that is different from the good that is of God. Are you there? So what Jesus meant was that uh, my godness is the reason for my goodness. Goodness flows out of me because I am God. So don't say that I am good if you don't acknowledge that I am God. It will mean that the good you are talking about is a good that is exempt of God. But my goodness flows out of my godness. Are you there? So don't call me good if you don't acknowledge that I am God. I'm not, I'm not good because I'm God. I'm not God because I'm good, but I am good because I am God. You get it? The difference? So we need to probe beyond face value. Is it good? Then it is God. Mm. I will show you from Genesis to Revelation goods that there is no God factored in. So if we want to play the game of only touching the good that flows out of God, it means that we want to function by the principles of God and our lives will be an illustration of the position of the kingdom of God. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. All right, let's do Acts chapter 19. This is just a summary I want to do before I enter into another matter. Acts chapter 19, beginning from verse number 13. Acts 19, verse number 13. Went to minister somewhere in the north, and then a, mini a music minister was invited, came to the podium and took the microphone, and she began to sing. Her voice was as thin as that of a nightingale. She, she, could, she could do all kinds of stuff across octaves. Her vo vocal cord was treated with lime because what she could do with her voice was, was a miracle. But while she ministered, the Holy Ghost in my spirit had a problem because what she was doing was good. But at the end of the day, at the end of that service, we discovered it, it did not come from God. 
may you not be trapped in the good island. Make effort to go to the God island in the name of Jesus Christ. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you there? So some guys became interested. They had looked upon the ministry of Paul and they saw the authority he exercised. And they felt it was not so difficult to learn what Paul was doing. So they copied his utterances. They copied his vocal deliveries in issuing authority. <laughs> ah, and they came to real evil spirits. The, the, the problem about this matter is that the person they came to was possessed not with a cartoon spirit, but a real evil spirit. So this was their declaration. I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. Now, next verse, next verse. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew of the chief priest, which did so. You will notice that when the evil spirit was doing the analysis, in split seconds, the spirit had gone to the archives. The archives of the demonic realm to find out if there was any record of these individuals that were trying to expel them in the archives of darkness. Next verse. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. So even demons run checks beyond face value. Demons. Jesus I know, Paul I know, we have no record of you. Demons run background checks. But the average believer will just embrace a stream without checking a source. Demons probed into the source of the authority and found out that there was no record of these guys in the realm of the spirit. On the strength of that, the demon was saying, there is no reason for us to obey you. Meanwhile, there was nothing wrong with the authority charge. I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. It was unfortunate for them, it was Paul that preached Jesus. They did not. And uh, they were in league with real devils. And even demons run probes to find out the source of a man's authority. So when you come upon the scene as a preacher and you begin to do damage to demons, you can be sure of one thing. These demons are going to run a check on your source. Are you there? When they run that check, they discover that they can molest these guys without any consequence. And one demoniac, he dealt with seven men and they ran naked and wounded. If he, if he had just wounded them, it would have been good. But they ran naked. That's what happens when a man without the needed credibility begins to tamper with the kingdom of darkness. The consequences are instant and shameful. But it is possible for someone to masquerade because God is a God of mercy. His objective is that he wants to bring everyone to the knowledge of the truth. And so when, one, when someone begins to masquerade as an angel of light, the repercussion doesn't come instantly. But you see, 
the person's enterprise is not likely to prosper if the priest in that generation make a demarcation between that which is holy and that which is profane. It doesn't matter how he tries to do his stuff. Because the discernment quotient that is available and rooted in the body of Christ is on the high side, he cannot sell his fake enterprise in the body of Christ. So one of the most noble labors that we need to bequeath to the body at this time is, a, is a, a, the principles through which we can run spiritual checks and find out the source of things. Because that's what Jesus would do. And he did that in the book of John chapter 8 verse 44 where we read yesterday. Hallelujah. Now I'd like to show you something quickly. Because I did a research on false prophets and I've been doing that research for the past three years now. Hallelujah. Been doing that research for the past three years. By the prompting of the Holy Spirit, I began to do that research. And I looked for books everywhere that will help me build muscle in the research I was doing. And unfortunately, I did not find so many and the ones I found were scanty. So I knew that I had to do that research um, myself. These are the things I found. It is not yet complete. Um, when it is fully complete with all the needed muscle, we will put them in a book. But uh, these are some of the things I found. Still talking about source. Are you there? Do you still remember? Do you still remember that uh, if we go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5, beginning from verse uh, 21, Galatians 5, 21, if you are helping me, help me out. So, these are the works of the flesh. I'd like to pick one of them. Because the operating system of that which is dead is set up on the flesh. And the operating system of that which gives life is set up in the spirit. So let's look at the layout of the flesh a little. These are descriptions of works of the flesh, things that the flesh is capable of manufacturing, things that the flesh is capable of producing. And whenever you see these things, you trace it back to its source, and the source is flesh. Do you understand that? So when we talk about the concept of sowing and reaping in the Old Testament, it has to do with sowing grain, okay? We can also apply it to mean sowing money, and that will be effective. And um, that also is partly uh, the concept that is captured in New Testament layout. But this matter of sowing and reaping goes deeper in the New Testament, even though it's acknowledges giving as sowing and all kinds of sowing. Sowing mercy, sowing kindness. So all of that is still under the broad subject of sowing. But the, the, the uniqueness, the uniqueness about the, the subject of sowing within the landscape of the New Testament is um, where you are sowing into. Because you can't be sowing into the spirit and the Bible reveals to us that uh, what you are hoping to get by that investment is what? It's life. You can also be sowing into the flesh. And the Bible reveals to us the expectation that you should have if your efforts of sowing is in the flesh. Are you there? Now, so we need to take inventory of this operating system called the flesh, because the flesh is to Satan what your recreated human spirit is to God. This is the infrastructure that Satan is going to be floating on if he comes into your space. And the flesh and the spirit are concurrent realities. It means at every point in time, Satan can speak to you through the flesh. And at every point in time, Satan, God can speak to you through the spirit. So the infrastructure of the flesh is still available. So you can, Satan can get your attention. Satan can think his thoughts through your mind. 
Are you there? So all these realities are going to be bumping into your space. And that's why it's need for you to be able to discern them so that you will know what you will yield to. The book of um, Romans chapter 6 reveals that it is possible for you to yield to the flesh. It means that the flesh and the spirit are concurrent realities. Okay, let me read to us. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. He said, oh, no, no, no. Can you go to 20 so that we put all of this? No, 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 no. Go to. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. So these are manifestations of the flesh. And surprisingly, the Bible calls it works. It means, it sounds like it takes a lot of effort to produce this. It sounds like it takes a lot of exertion to produce this. You will need to violate your spirit to walk in this. You need to violate the promptings of the Holy Ghost in order for you to establish this and to become comfortable with this. It will take a lot of effort. And the first on the list is adultery. Second is fornication. Third is uncleanliness. Fourth is lasciviousness. That means lasciviousness means anything goes. Now, if you are on the broad path, and that's what the Bible means by the broad path, Anything goes. We can do fornication. We can do prophecy. We can do adultery. We can do forensic dimensions of word of knowledge. Anything goes. We can go left, the positive terminal. We can also touch the, the, the um, negative terminal. Now, in such quarters, what you are going to find is that there is, there is um, uh, this trivialized position about the things of the flesh so that it can be accommodated in the ecosystem. And I've seen that across Africa. And the people that operate like this are more noisy than any set of people because they are trusting to use the power of social media to achieve their feet and to help them spread. So they, are, they pay big money. They are on television. They are in your face every day. They are on cable in your face every day. They put a lot of money into doing this. Because they know that the Lord will not power those voices. So they need to do something humanly possible to create that level of spread, that level of consciousness. And there is a product that they are advertising. is a product of lawlessness. It means there is no law in that space. Anything can go. But when you come into the kingdom of God, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Now, you see, there are two things we were told to seek. You seek the kingdom. And what does it mean really to seek the kingdom? Hallelujah. You seek to know the policies of the kingdom of heaven that God is setting you up as an individual to implement. The kingdom is so vast. And you need to find out the policy of the kingdom of heaven that God has raised you to implement. And then you focus on it. Please help me tell your neighbor that your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. When you yield to the Holy Spirit uh, to accomplish that which God has raised you to accomplish in the earth, and, and what God has raised all of us to accomplish is different and is particular to us as individuals, and if you don't seek it, you will never know it. So you need to seek the policies of heaven that, in, that touch your life, that touch your destiny. The Bible also says we need to seek the righteousness that is in that kingdom. Now, are you there with me? If you have ever been to a court of law, there is a statement you are likely to stumble on, maybe on the day that judgment is passed. Then you hear the judge say something like, you are discharged and acquitted. It means that you are declared righteous. The accusations against you are false. You are in right standing according to the law of this land. 
And so when you begin to seek the kingdom of God, don't just seek to know the policies of, of heaven that affect your life as an individual. Also press to find out the laws that governs your practice. Because it is expected of you to be in conformity and compliance with the laws that govern your practice. That's the only way your service can, can be adopted by God. And God will say, this is my work. The laws that govern your practice must be part of what you need to seek out and begin to implement. There are so many things the anointing can do. The anointing has capacity to do so many things. And when you walk in the anointing, people will want to deify you. All right? But if you know the laws that govern that anointing that you carry, you will not, you will not come into problems with God because you want to walk uprightly, consistent with the laws that govern the kingdom utensils that God is handing out to you to prosecute your destiny. Are you there? Why I made all of these comments is that when you begin to go closer to God, the, the higher you go in God, the more you realize that the laws increase. Your, your part is going to be constrict. It will become, the higher you go, the laws God will put around, around your life so that it's, it's, there are so many laws up there. Sometimes I wonder how people like Pastor Kumi survives. Because as God is giving you kingdom utensils, giving you spiritual insight to steward, giving you grace, giving you power. He, if you are not wise, you will just take off like a tornado and you will not go to... The same way you pressed in the spirit to know what your calling is. You press in the spirit to know what your purpose is. You press in the spirit to know where you are supposed to begin to implement and to pioneer this thing that God has told you. The same way you press, that's the same way you are going to press to know the laws. So that you can walk uprightly with those laws. So it is possible for you to be anointed, but you are out of sync with the laws that support that realm that you are carrying. So I'm trying to make you understand that lasciviousness is not an option in the kingdom of God. You cannot be so liberal that you can operate from the negative and the positive terminal. In fact, as you grow in the spirit, it becomes, oh my, the options reduce. It reduces. Because you can no longer claim that you are not aware. Have you heard statements from Jesus? He said, forgive them for they know not what they are. There's a time that comes where you know what you are doing. You know, like I, me, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Are you there? I know what I'm doing. So it becomes constricted. You are, the, 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 the weight of the government of God becomes thicker on your life. Are you there? A woman came to our ministry, stayed on for nine years, was after nine years, she came to visit me in the office and said, now I can bring my daughters. After nine years. Very critical woman. She, she would just put her, her specs here like this. And after nine years, she came to the conclusion that we're not looking for women. That's a protective mother. And she knows that even in the body of Christ, there are wolves. I don't know what experience, experiences she has had in, in the past that made her put her spectacles here. <laughs> because she knows that the possibility of finding wolves in the house of God is hard. And after nine years, okay, this one is called this, this one is called that, this one is this number of years old, this one is She came two years later and said, look for husbands for them. That, that's, the, that's the difficult aspect. They, that one was, <coughs> may the Lord give you understand. <laughs> that aspect is the, is, is the difficult, was the difficult aspect. But you see, she had trusted me to a point where she believed that if I say, there's something that is, she was. There are laws. The anointing that you carry is a trust. And Jesus is telling you how to be accurate. 
you need to seek to know the laws that governs what you are stewarding so that you can comply. The realm does not allow for lasciviousness. The moment you begin to see symptoms of lasciviousness, it means that there is another operating system and the name is called flesh. Lawlessness, when you see that, because there is no aspect of the kingdom of God that God allows to operate without his government. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, next verse. Idolatry, then witchcraft. So we are going to use witchcraft as one of the signposts. I hope you know all of these things are of the flesh. I don't want to go do so, so much and to move into other words. Let's use witchcraft. It's, so there is a dimension of the operation of witchcraft that is rooted into the, the fallen nature. It's part and parcel of the fallen nature. And when we talk about witchcraft, we are saying the, your, a, a tendency to control, a tendency to dominate, a tendency to intimidate and to bend. Are you there? A tendency to dominate. That tendency is part of the wiring of the fallen man. Now, it, and it will interest you to know that in the case of Saul, Saul was the one, the apostle that pioneered extinction, the extinction of other mediums in Israel. He, he shut down the shops of necromancers, he shut down the shops of diviners, shut down the shops of soothsayers. So soothsaying and divination and all of that was no longer popular in Israel because of the conviction of the king Saul. I will show you in scripture where Saul began to embrace the things of the flesh. Because even though he had lost favor with God, he still wanted the people to acknowledge him as someone that was in favor with God. That, that, that angular shift, huh? I hope you know that's manipulation. Samuel was saying, you are out of the game, but he wanted Samuel to still walk with him as, uh, as though everything was okay to present a charade before the people so that the people can feel that everything is all right. Now, a false minister really is concerned about his packaging, how he looks on social media, how he looks in the public space. That's his area of interest. Whether or not it's in alignment with God is not the issue. Whether or not it's in God's good books is not important. What he wants is that he must be shining, he must look right in the eyes of people. All right? So, Saul started from that level of the flesh, and he accommodated it was part of his principle of go principles of governance. Hmm. And it came to pass when the obvious reality of his disalignment from God was revealed in the fact that God stopped speaking to him. He could not consult God with the Urim and the Turim. He could not consult God with the effort. If you use the effort to consult on Saul's behalf, God will not speak. Even prophets that were in the palace, that used to pick things, the moment God expressed his displeasure with Saul, those prophetic guys, their antenna, their channel were shut down. So there was no way that Saul could accept the access divine help, help in his condition. The same man that was used to the ways of the flesh now felt it was important for him to consult a medium. You see, he began witchcraft in the flesh. Are you there? And a time came where uh, he felt there was a need for him to now consult with the spirit of witchcraft. And that's why I'm asking you as a preacher to go back and listen to what you preached 10 years ago and listen to what you are preaching now. It may, it, may, it may seem that you might find a shocking difference between the two. I went to a minister in Botswana and I was told about a preacher that is very popular, that he was actually born again once. And I was also told about the 
accomplice, people that took him to altars to fraternize with Satan. So he was born again once, and those people know him as a Christian. And they also knew when he went into spiritism. And you may not know, but if Nigeria is even a bit sane when it comes to pastors mingling into spiritism. As we travel, West Africa is a bit sane. And when I say West Africa, I'm talking about um, not every country in West Africa anyway. But when you travel out, then you begin to see mixtures of all kinds. And it's the norm. So somebody is concerned about how he looks before the crowd. And um, so we need to probe beyond the natural. Because what the people want you to see are things that you, you look out for. So we need to probe deeper to find out what happens behind the scene. Does this man have, have God's testimony? And that's why we cannot put aside the witness of the Holy Ghost quietly in our spirit. Because God himself uh, put a measure of discernment in every single believer. And it is time that we listen to the voice of the spirit of truth at a bears witness concerning things. Okay, so here. Are you there? From operating witchcraft in the flesh to operating it by a spirit of witchcraft. Now, in my Bible study, I found out that there are two, three, okay, three major reasons or three major outlooks of a minister that is operating from the flesh. The first objective of all his activity, number one, is gain. Gain. Second texture of their labors is that they use people. They use people. They don't build people, but they use people. So everybody is a tool to be used. If you know the responsibility uh, of discipling one believer in the house of God, as you have seen them, they are lawyers. They are, how many of you in this choir are barristers? Let me see. Okay, we don't have any barristers here. Okay, how many members of our workforce are barristers? Learned people. Let me see, honey. Okay, there's one there. All right. So you might see, sister, stand up. You might see a sister like that and not know that she's learned. All right? Very learned. And then, you know everybody knows who, use, who wants to use them. Over time, it will become clear, not with spiritual gift, too. over time it will become clear if the objective is just to use her. Sit down, lawyer. So first, there is this emphasis on gain. Secondly, there is this emphasis on using. And that, that, um, that intention to use is the opposite of build. How many of you were able to pray for 10 hours before you joined us in Arce and Lagos? Okay, let's do it the other way around. How many of you could not pray the way you are praying now before you joined us? So you see, something has been built. A capacity has been built. And if, if capacity will be built in people, there is only one way it can be accomplished. is through sacrifice. So discipleship involves commitment. It involves sacrifice. But anything that is built on the flesh is an activity that is designed to use people. Number three, the overall objective, the overall objective 
of the initiative is selfish. It is self-centered. The overall objective is not empowering the body of Christ, not laboring to unveil the mind of God, and to develop kingdom content and make it available for anyone that wants to navigate on the Lord's path. All of these are not part of the objectives. It is an enterprise that is what? Selfish. Um, when you see that church becomes, is operating like a business, then you need to understand that genuine ministry is absent. Because the objective of business is profit. So if I pray for you, you pay for the prayer. If I prophesy on you, what do you do? You pay for the prophecy. If I lay hands on you, you pay for the anointing. If you are coming to see me in the office, you come with service charge. So you will now discover that what is going on is not a service that is inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it is a business that is running. You pay for prayer. You pay for blessing. You pay for consultation and counseling. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Then you will know that the objective is a business. And if it is a business, then it is rooted in the flesh and God is absent. This is my own personal research, okay? All right. Should I go on? Number what now? So in... In an initiative that is powered by the flesh, you will see the preacher using curses as a means of control. That if you do this, the curses of our ancestors will come upon you. So when you see an atmosphere where people are regulated by curses, all right? Uh, just know that uh, that's one of the insurance policies that the flesh makes available. If you can release a curse and say, if anybody that operates like this, you are cursed. It's a, it's a way of witchcraft. It's a way of control using curses as an instrument. Whenever you see the need to use a curse as an instrument to uh, gain some form of compliance is an indication of the fact that what is going on there has its operating system in the flesh. Because the way Paul did ministry was that he commended himself to every man's conscience in the fear of God. It is in the privacy of their conscience that they received a nudging from God to begin to follow Apostle Paul. Do you understand that? There was no more barricade that was built to contain the people other than the witness of the Holy Ghost that was administered on their conscience. When you find that, and there's a lot of that right now, is now the trend for curses to be used as instrumentalities of dominion and control. Those are principles of witchcraft, and they are rooted in the works of the flesh. I'm saying that the flesh can masquerade and, be, and, and it can do ministry, the flesh. But these are the symptoms that you are going to find in a situation where ministry is done under the operating system of the flesh. I wanted to drift today into the major theme of the conference, but I'm going too far here. I have a few scriptures I want to read this morning. Ah, Jesus. Okay, let's just stay here. Let's stay here. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Number what? Five, when you discover that um, the, in the history of the ministry, there is, in the foundation of the ministry, um, they pioneered that ministry in rebellion. According to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22 to 24, please help me. 
Help me. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 to 24. If in the foundation of the ministry you have any form of rebellion and the work that we claim to be doing for God was pioneered under the auspices of a rebellious spirit, this is what the Bible has to say about that. And Samuel said, had the Lord, it, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, this is, these are equations from the Spirit. Equations. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hack in than the fats of Ram. That's the first spiritual disclosure. It's a it's spiritual knowledge that Samuel gave. And the first thing he said is that it is to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. How will it look like if you ask someone to bring the equipment? Maybe the equipment is outside, and you ask the person, bring the, the equipment in. And instead of the person bringing the equipment, the person begins to scrub the floor. And it might even be that scrubbing the floor is more difficult than bringing the equipment. Are you there? The person has exalted that sacrifice much more than obedience. The only reason why you should be in ministry is not because someone is because you are doing it to obey God. Are you there? Yes, obedience to God. That's why I'm here. I'm here in obedience to God. We finished building a very good place in Benue State, and it is customary, according to the trends of our time, for you to build a good place, and then you get situated in the heart of the place, laboring to fill the place. And while they were working on my office, there they were arguments. They said, no, the office is too small. They had to break some walls and extend the office, and then they, had, they finished the tiling and the screening, and it was white and fine, glory. And they came in with big tables and chairs. So I walked in, one of those times they had not yet painted the wall. It was a big white office. And I sat on the table and the Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, your place is not here. <laughs> your place is not here. Your labor for me, that's if you want to obey me, I know this place is good. This place is all right. This place is comfortable. It's convenient. But if your business is the business of obeying me, what I want you to be doing right now is to hop from place to place, from city to city, from nation to nation, bearing witness of my kingdom. That's your place. So I now call Chief Don. I said, ah, you've been looking for a place to pray and all of that. Here you are. Pray here. Because I knew that if my business was going to be obeying God, we were in an auditorium of 250 capacity. Then we built an auditorium of 4,000 capacity. Don't you think that I need to be doing everything possible so that the place will be filled up? That's another calling. <laughs> that is a call. May you, not be, may you not be trapped in your own calling. May you not be trapped in your calling. May you not be bothered about your calling. So if you want to still remain relevant to me and to obey me, discontinue from claiming this place and let's meet on the field. Since that instruction came, it's um, about one year, eight months now, we've been hopping from place to place. When we, I checked how many boarding passes I had, for last year, it was 54. 50, 54 boarding passes. The last time I checked, the number of weeks in a year are 52. I had 54 boarding passes for last year. Because the great one came to me and said, 
meet me on the field. Your place is not here. All right? So we, we continue. Meanwhile, I didn't envisage, I never envisaged that after we got that place built by the hand of God, then God will now be more interested in having me be outside of that place than in that place. I'm saying that even in your own honest attempt to be relevant, you might be doing something that is not an emphasis in God. Obeying the voice of the Lord is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the facts of Ram. So this is spiritual knowledge. He gives us another spiritual knowledge in verse 23. Please go to verse. For rebellion is as the sin of, that means rebellion equals witchcraft. You see, to obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience is different from sacrifice. Are you there? But rebellion is equal to witchcraft. Can you see the formula? These, these things he said came from spiritual knowledge. So if you have a ministry that was pioneered under the auspices of rebellion, there is nothing of God that can hang on it. Now, what Mani taught us this. He said all sins produce darkness, but the sin of rebellion produced the highest measure of darkness. That's what money. I will never forget that. After I read that, I had to check my life to see if there was rebellion in any aspect of my dealings whatsoever, and to live free of rebellion so that my works can be wrought in God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Is there any record of rebellion that is tied to it? If there is a rebellion, then it will produce darkness. If there is rebellion, then it will produce death. You know, I told you that our probe has gone beyond whether it is good or evil. Where is it now? Whether it is life or death. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, number what? Number six, using hype to replace the Holy Ghost. Hype, hype, hype. Yeah. Hype. H-Y-P-E. Hype. So somebody holds a microphone, and then when you talk, then the person will hype it. Have you, have you seen that? Because things must be rolling. Things must be rolling. Things must be rolling. <laughs> uh, so when you say something, then the, the person will, you know, the person has a voice that can, you know, so he, he does that in the back. And that's preaching. If anybody goes high in the house of God, he should be under the influence of the Spirit of God. And meanwhile, we don't need a hype man behind the scene to make any difference. So when you begin to see all these things, you just see it is rooted in the flesh. That is showing you the source. Now, and, and we need to be this detailed so that you can understand what is the nature of this thing. The thing can be as big as a stadium, but if it is the flesh, it is the flesh. For the Bible says that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So when you see those hypes, I think you need to make your, up your mind at those points. Are you there? And then, finally, you see things like selling of prophecy. I was in a meeting when a minister was meet, ministering. He came to a lady and said, your name is Grace. She said, yes. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing there's one money. Okay, then he said, let's, let's negotiate. This money I'm seeing. How much will you give me? He said, okay, I will give you. 40%. See, but I'm the one that is seeing it. And it was negotiated, okay, 50 50, yes, okay, 50 50. Then you now continue and say, This amount, you will receive an alert of. Then, meanwhile, the drummer was already. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I 
So prophecy is for sale. Our spiritual sight, our spiritual capacities, once we begin to flow in it, then we monetize it. And everybody pays some amount and pays some amount and everybody is happy. Now, you see, uh, we are old school people. And um, the Bible says, freely have you received, so freely give. So if you are in the service of Jesus, we will see it by your method, by your strategy, by your approach. We will know what powers what you do, whether it is flesh or spirit. Meanwhile, this list I just read out to you is doing ministry powered by flesh. There is another list here, doing ministry powered by evil spirits. There, he has his own symptom. Oh, you are not with me. Uh, because you are, you, you see, I say I've been doing research for three years. What I just read to you is, are the symptoms you will find if it is done by flesh. I have a list, and that list is more exhaustive of the symptoms you will find if it's powered by a spirit. I mean a dark spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, you are not following. Since you are not following, I'm going to stop. First symptoms you will find if it's powered by a foul spirit is that there will be a chain of ladies that have been used as, a sex, as sex objects chain of ladies chain of ladies anyone that operates under the influence of a spirit of divination will have an insatiable appetite for sex in fact that is what is used to service the power to renew the power so there are going to be chains of ladies chains of them many of them and for Many among these chains of ladies that have been used in this regard, these ladies are going to have issues with bleeding, continuous bleeding. Just in case, as a minister of the gospel, someone comes with this symptom, just ask the lady, hey, can you tell me the story behind this matter? I can tell you like a mathematical formula that if there is an issue of persistent bleeding after that act, then there is a very strong spiritual matter and you will need to have rank in the spirit to be able to help that lady. Are you there? Two, if a spirit is used, you are going to find these symptoms on almost all the members. Confusion, depression, and the spirit of accusation. Confusion, depression, and the spirit of what? Of accusation. Haunting the members that have been under this influence. What number is that? Number three, if a spirit is involved, then we are going to have what is called demonic impartation. Demonic impartation. Demonic what? Impartation. Now, it's obvious you are not uh, very interested in this, my list. So, um, I have uh, shut down for now. Amen. Now, listen to me. I, uh, by the grace of God, I am a missionary, and I preach from place to place, bearing the word of the kingdom, and um, prophesying, preaching, and praying. And part of the trends I see on the field are people that have received demonic impartations. Where is Toby, my man? Now, uh, I will conduct a practical here now, and we'll find at least two individuals in this place that have received demonic impartation. Because I know you don't believe. So we will try to locate two individuals that are victims of demonic impartation. Demonic impartation is a terrible menace, a strange menace in the body of Christ. If you say you are a minister of the gospel and you don't have power to expel devils, you are not relevant in this time. There are many businesses that have opened up 
in, in, in the ICT realm. Go and learn one. And you will make enough money. There are remote jobs now online. You can in, be cooked up to a job in Brussels while you are in Lagos. And you are making a thousand pounds, two thousand pounds every month. And you can you can do great things with two thousand pounds. How two thousand pounds is how much in Naira now? What, what? They know. <laughs> Glory to God. One point five million. You say you don't know how to cast out devils? It's not part of your ministry? Then your ministry is elitist. It's not sent to this generation. Because I have statistics to show you that the level of demonic contamination right now has never been in history. Never been in history. Never been in the whole of history. People that unfortunately, I went to Enugu to preach and they brought a lady to me that was deaf, barrister, deaf lady. So I ministered to her, she began to hear and the whole family was excited. Then I said, wait, 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 wait. How did she become deaf? She went for a crusade and the man of God laid hands on her and she became deaf. Yes! Uh, Philip, were you there? You see, you, there are a lot of, I have so many experiences because I've been on the field from the village till today. She became deaf because a man of God laid hands on her. Yes, in any way. In any way. Okay. That meeting, uh, this actress called Mama G, she was there. So when, when I asked, uh, how did you become deaf? And they said it. Mama G shouted, Aah! That's how the person became deaf. Do you know how many people are contaminated? You sent your, your, your child to school and your child comes back and you know this is not your child. Contamination. He has gone somewhere for one night vigil and the guy just renewed his powers and came to prophesy. Shall I prophesy? my knees to pray in the night and the Holy Ghost will tell me you cannot be weak now there are so many people that have been polluted and they need to be cleaned up that's what happens when there is no demarcation between the profane and the holy demonic impartation this lady begins to do something like prophecy do something like what I'm not that she sees visions and all of that and then people believe that is prophetic meanwhile it's one of the resources that was picked up from a strange place if you allow that spirit there for too long it will wipe out the, the 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 appetite the desire for the person to go to school no i'm already a prophet it will it will blot out every desire for the person to be responsible for the person to want to develop his or herself and control by this spirit begins to seep in and to disarm every aspect of the person's life. And if we don't intervene quickly, you will find a situation that eventually the psychiatrist will call a mental health challenge. And all it was was a demonic impartation. I've walked into the psychiatric world before. And the reason why I came was to discharge some people. I didn't know it was wrong. I said, wait, why are we doing deliverance in the corner and doing it on Sunday morning? See the people. So I went to the psychiatric ward. Oh my God. You don't know how much zeal I have. Zeal, zeal. I said, we are doing this thing by the corner. If it's true that we, are, we, we can do this in the name of the Lord, here they are. So I visited the psychiatric ward and looked for the most terrible case. And the boy's name was Sunday. You see, you... It was on Christmas Day. And I was on white suit. The first time I wore my wedding suit after my wedding. That was that day. 
because my wedding suit was big on my wedding day. I had fasted. I was dry. I was inside like fish swimming. So after many years, I had to I put on weight and then the suit now fitted me after like five years after my wedding. May the Lord give you understanding. So I just discovered that it's my size now. So in that joy, I, I, I arrayed myself. But it was in that same apparel that I was in the psychiatric. Do you know I saw people that were in that place that had no business being in that place because the reason why they are there was a demonic impartation. And I say this because I have a gift. A gift that enables me to know things like this. And you see, may God help you to know that I'm not saying it boastfully. I'm just crying. I'm crying. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. One member of our fellowship in Benue State, he said, oh, my daughter is wedding and you don't know her. You have not blessed her. Let me bring her. Brought daughter. I said, oh, this one is dead now. Ah, he said, oh, to... ah, don't worry. Come. Sit down, sit down. Stick. Stick, sit. Then I went there and touched her, touched her. Then she fell off. And then this black, I don't know what they call it, this black stuff went up. It was wide for 30 minutes. I said, oh, come and see your daughter that wants to wait. I said, she went somewhere and they deposited something. And whether she is aware of it or not, part of her blood is being drawn. And especially when you are burning low, there's no fire on your life. You are born again, but burning low. And it's nobody's fault. You chose to operate that way. Ah, you are a victim. You are not free. That's why we cook fire in our lives. So that if something kills us, it bounces. It bounces back. So I cast the spirit of death from her. Then the mother now said, what if she didn't bring her daughter? Whether that's your fault, whether you bring her or not is your fault. But I've seen so many contaminated people that went and picked things up. When you, when you interview them behind the scene, you now discover they did nothing wrong other than going to a place where they received a demonic impartation. Now, the first thing we'll do this morning as practical is to snuff out every demonic impartation in this place. Now, I need your permission to go into this line of ministry. You don't? Okay. Now, now so, are you there? During the course of what we want to do, some of you will manifest. You don't mind. But you see, I will, anyone that manifests will ensure that the thing is casted out. I have seen people that received impartations like that they couldn't marry. Oh, you know, the same way we receive, we release impartations, people go, break through, they prosper, they do well, all kinds of stuff. When you receive such impartation, it begins to fulfill the devil's wishes, the devil's intentions in the lives of men. And the people don't know where it comes from. Yes, that's the reason why we should never, never, and I mean never. I, my children, the ones, the people I pastor, the people that hear my voice, will never sit under someone that uses a spirit that is not the Holy Spirit. Never. Never. Are we there? Oh my God. So what we'll do in this practical is that we'll speak in tongues for five minutes. Five minutes. There's, there, there, there are dimensions of poverty that are unnatural. Just lack. Just this lack that you cannot explain. It's just drought. It's famine. Thank 
Kando lobo sokoria Bahabe disco bresco valato akateni For five minutes you just exercise your spirit For five minutes Because a walk of purging will take place here this morning The walk of purging Has the spirit of death been deposited upon you? Did you pick up something that is not of God? And it is manipulating your life, it's bending your life, it's influencing your life. Sofe Labando, Presco Feti, Nebro Cantelia, Zama Kundeli, Rebeke Tecos Cadabala, Rusca Pabandele Coseminite. Those deposits and those trees that have not been planted by God must be rooted out. Sevila compre ketali suveza mahai kompana masuka bale presko pelekado presko satala bande esuse la ai kompado abranse kude mandeli akaba bon sakatala. Rakaseli mokori abande bobo sokoto. Jesus and Akante Baboria, Shenikai Tobezi, Apres Kompokodo, Brakatala Babonsane, Akandos Iko Babata. Rata Baboke Samenai, Shaminantale Babo Sante, Yeko Semino Compres, Kito Bande Baboria. There is a purging that we want to ask the Lord to do in our midst today. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Esoko mahalatalia kezo naid. Deso sento ke boros kita brante, akai kumbala masiko, resko filante, akamenso la kadia, akanta babonde, asima kade bona, iata kesko te brela, asebi nantoria, esiko presko valante lia. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Now, first of all, before we go deeper, I want to ask a question. Now, is there anyone in our midst you suddenly began to hear voices? You suddenly began to hear voices and... You suddenly began to experience sexual activities in your dream. That was not the case before, but that is the case now. In fact, for one of the uh, persons that we are, that I'm talking about, the sexual thing, the molesting thing has become embarrassing because it doesn't only happen when you sleep. You can be trying to focus, you can be trying to read, and then you begin to have those experiences. Now, these three things, if what I just said looks like your condition, come, come on. Now, there's someone's case who is very serious. That's the one I tried to describe. Even... When you are awake, these spirits can come and molest you. Break 
every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. And there is this, you know, when 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 this deposits upon people, what happens? Are you with me? Stay with me. When these deposits are upon people, they are not able to maximize their potential. All right, so this is what I will do, okay? I will touch you just so that my hands can make contact with your head, just like this, okay? I will touch everybody on the front line, all right? Then I will pray a prayer, then you see the effect. Just a touch, and then I will pray. So now I've touched everyone that is in the front. Listen to me, listen to me. For everyone that has a deposit on them, even though I've removed my hand from your head, my hand will remain on your head. Now wait, don't say amen, just keep quiet. I've removed my hand from your head. But for everyone that has a deposit, you will see the impact of my hand being on your head um, in the next um, 17 seconds. In the next 17 seconds. The impact of my hand being on your head, you will see it. So you are beginning to see the impact. The impact of my hand being on your head, you begin to see it in, in some seconds, in some seconds, in some seconds. If there's a deposit, there'll be a reaction because Anytime you introduce something of God and there's something of Satan, there's going to be a reaction. Now, there will be a reaction for many of the people standing in front there that I touched. There'll be a reaction. There'll be a reaction. So that's one. That, okay. It, it will intensify now. It will intensify. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want you to help us this morning remove that deposit. And let there be a reaction. Let the deposit react out, 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 react out of those lives, react out, react out, react out. Now, if, if you notice when I touched them, it, it was not forceful. It was not forceful at all. It wasn't forceful at all. Okay, it's even coming stronger. The wave, there's a wave coming. There's a wave, there's a wave. There's a wave. It's coming strong. It's coming so strong. There's a wave. There's a wave. There's a wave. When I touched them, it was not forceful. I'm just trying to show you in the best way I can the, the, um, the presence of deposits. 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 So I will touch again. I will touch again. You see, you see, um, when I touched them, it wasn't forceful. But any time something of God comes in contact with what is not of God, there is a reaction. There's a reaction. Right now, you see the reaction? Now, there are still three of you standing on the front line who still have a deposit. And the hand of God is going to intensify and you are going to see the reaction before I release the rest. Father, those three others still standing in the front line that have a deposit, let there be a reaction so that the deposit can be snuffed out. So that it can be removed. So that it can be taken away. So that it can be taken away. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's start again from here.
we remove it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So those of you on the first row, you can go back. Now listen, listen, listen. There's somebody still in the congregation. This spirit that molests you in your dreams has started doing it when you are awake. I'm looking for you. Come, come to me. Come. The spirit that molests you in your dreams now does it when you are awake. And it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. Those of you on the first line, you can go back so that I can have access to the people on the second line. First line can go back. First line can go back. The one that is being molested in the daytime, come to me in the front here. Come here. Come, 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 come. So what is your experience? You in the daytime? Yes. Okay. Just last week. And it's, it's, all right, so. Any other person? Now, I don't know how to say this. Um, no, I can't say it. And so we will touch her a little. And then the hand will remain there. Because if, if, if darkness is present, when you introduce light, light cannot, darkness cannot handle light. Darkness cannot. So the illegal union is hereby destroyed. You are in the same category? All right, so we'll touch you here. And we'll touch you here. Touch you here. Lord, let the weight of your glory begin to descend upon them and let every darkness be destroyed. Let the weight of your glory descend and let darkness be destroyed. Let the weight of your glory descend, let darkness be destroyed. Let the weight descend and let darkness give way. Let darkness give way in the name of Jesus. Let darkness give way in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Let darkness give way, give way in the name of Jesus. I separate you from this contamination. I separate you from this pollution. I release you from this manipulation of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free. Be delivered in Jesus' mighty name. Be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Be delivered in Jesus' name. So those of you in the front, I will come again and just touch you. Can uh, Oshas, is it possible to separate the line so that I can... Can you make two lines out of this? So that I can still finish okay so we'll just touch you and it will be very light to be very light very light it's all about introducing light and then you will see that darkness doesn't have the capacity to endure the presence of light. Amen. Just touch you a little. So in the next um, 17 seconds, anyone that has a deposit, you begin to see a reaction, a reaction. It will begin to intensify, it will begin to intensify. The reaction will intensify as the hand of God, oh my God, it will intensify. It will, it will become stronger. It will become stronger. It will become stronger. It will become stronger. It will begin to intensify. It will become stronger. To become, yes, it will become stronger. To become stronger. To become stronger. 
and the Holy Spirit will rip it off. Will rip it off. Will rip it off. He will remove it. He will remove it. He will remove it. He will remove it. He will remove it from you. Go. 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 Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, so I sense the presence of the angel of the Lord that normally comes to assist me in deliverance. And the reason why the angel has disclosed his presence is because there is a case. A case that is very diabolical a case that is very diabolical and in the next um, 12 seconds um, the Lord will begin to reveal who that person is the, the hand of God will come upon you in 12 seconds in 12 seconds the case that I'm talking about it will be so strong it will be so strong now bring that individual Just lay hands on his head and begin to speak in tongues. Father, if there are complicated issues, complicated issues of bondage associated with these matters, complicated issues of bondage, I ask that you stretch forth your hand and destroy, destroy, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it. In the name of Jesus. Destroy it. Destroy it in the name of Jesus. Someone was supposed to function as a medium. Someone was supposed to function as a medium. Yes, we destroy that yoke. Raise her up. Raise her up. It's a yoke. Um... I just need to touch her forehead. All right, all right. So, leave her, let her go. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Now, this, this is a... Ah. Let her go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, let every deposit on their lives be neutralized. Let the attendant limitations that come on the account of these deposits, let it be neutralized. In the name of Jesus. All right, you can go. But allow her, leave, leave her. Huh? Okay. I mean, don't release her to go. We, we, we still have some. Now, listen to me. Listen. If while I was ministering, your hand, especially your right hand, started becoming hot. You started feeling hot on your right hand. So you just... Raise that hand for me. Let me see. While I was ministering, your right hand started becoming hot. It means you have a part in the deliverance ministry. So come. Come. You have a part. You have a part in the deliverance ministry. <laughs> All right. Oh. 
So if it is possible, if it's possible, just move her that way so that I can come there. I know that I was sent to help her, so we'll, we'll deal with her case. You, you felt that heat on your right hand? All right, sir. I'm going to pray and there'll be a deposit. Amen. Uh, meanwhile, there are two people that use thick glasses that God uh, wants to heal. You use thick glasses. Before the service ends, um, you are going to be healed. And the service will end in like 15 minutes or so. So or my session will end in like 15 minutes. So you'll be healed before 15 minutes, okay? Now, now stop speaking in tongues. Just listen to me. I know you are fi there's fire everywhere. Just listen. Now I want you to receive, not... Now listen. Okay, yeah, brother. It's okay. He's, he's, he's good. He's good. So the reason why I, I wasn't using force. Okay? Just touch like this. So that you will know that I'm not influencing anything. All I'm doing is introducing light. Introducing life. Then we'll see the reaction. Okay? You don't need to push anybody. Just that hand that felt hot. Just that's all. Okay? So um in the next 20 seconds, the heat will come back and it will become a fire in many lives. It will, be, it will start with heat, then it will become a fire. It will start with heat, it will become a fire. It will start with heat, it will become a fire. Is that fire that will, is the deliverance fire? If you walk in that fire, if you walk in it, demons, demons will be displaced. So the heat is being transformed right now. It's becoming a fire. It's becoming a fire. It's becoming a fire. Lord, we ask, let this fire begin to burn. Let it burn as a sign that they have this impartation. They have this deposit upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Let the fire begin to burn and let it burn so strong. Let it burn so strong. Let it burn strong in the name of Jesus. Let it burn strong in the name of Jesus. Okay, it's coming even stronger. It's coming even stronger. It's coming strong. There's an intensity. There's an intensity. There's an intensity. There's an intensity. Holy Ghost. There's an intensity. There's an intensity. Yeah? The intensity. Oh my God. So that's a flame. That's a flame. If you carry that flame, Demons cannot stand you. If you carry that flame, demons cannot resist you. If you carry that flame, if you carry it, if you carry it, you cannot be resisted. From the little fire, it will become a big flame. From the little fire, it will become a big flame. Receive the empowerment in the name of Jesus. Receive the empowerment. Anytime you are clothed with this fire, then you become all kinds of things will begin to happen. People will be delivered. Thank you, Lord. So the first the first line can go so that I can access the second line. transform that heat to a fire the heat will be transformed so receive your portion receive an impartation the heat the heat will be transformed it will become a fire it will become a fire the heat will become a fire the heat 
will become a fire, a fire. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the heat will become a fire, to become a fire, to become a fire. Lord, yes, I have laid hands on them as instructed, so now make the heat a fire. So he will come, he's coming. Make it a fire, make it a fire. Increase the intensity, increase the intensity, increase the intensity, increase the intensity, increase the intensity. Make it a fire, make it a fire in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So that these ones also will be, oh my God, the fire is here. Yeah, it's a fire. Yeah. The heat will become a fire. The heat will become a fire. The heat it will be transformed and it will become a fire. The heat will be transformed. It will become a fire. A fire on your life. 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 become a fire in the name of Jesus 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 let the heat become a flame all right all right all right so thank you Lord thank you Father thank you Father so you can go Whenever that fire comes, it means you are on duty. He will show you the sign of that fire. He will show you the sign of that fire. He will show you the sign. Come, come, come. The heat will become a fire. To become a fire. To become a fire. To become a fire. The heat will become a fire. The heat will become a fire. Yes, sister, I'm sent to you. Don't worry. Come. Let's remove that thing finally. So that you can go about your life and fulfill your destiny. So the heat will become a fire. It will become a fire. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 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 I uproot, I uproot every instrument of manipulation that have stood around your life to bend your destiny, to influence your fortunes and your outcomes, your possibilities. I remove it from you right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the hand of God rest over your life. Oh yeah, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. I remove it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head. I send it back to the sender in Jesus' mighty name. Now, um, Um, okay. Yeah, you, yeah. From today, you can fulfill your destiny. So let me bless you. Those things we're trying, you're, you are a bag of potential, of goodwill from heaven. And because of that, some people got intimidated. Huh? So now I'm going to bless you so that just in case oh my god so anyone that the spirit of death has been hunting in the next the next few seconds don't worry don't worry it's okay amen so anyone that the spirit of death has been hunting now the anointing will come on you. There will be a quiet reaction. 
a little reaction, and then the hold of death will break. Okay? The hold of death will break. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone in this congregation that the spirit of death has been following from place to place, maybe evil people want to spill the blood of that individual, I ask, oh God, that you stretch forth your hand over this congregation, over this congregation, and that one that the spirit of death has been following, pursuing, Lord, arrest that one, arrest that one, arrest that one, arrest that one. There is, there is witchcraft in the family, and they want to take a life, arrest that one so that we can deal with that case. Arrest that one, arrest that one, arrest that one, arrest that one quickly, arrest that one. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, arrest, 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 arrest. Yeah. So some, some, some wicked people, oh my God, it's coming so strong now. It's coming so strong. If the spirit of death has been accompanying that life from place to place, seeking occasion, I ask for God, let your hand arrest. Now, 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 now. Can you see this? Um, Osha. Okay. Just shake me, shake me again. Huh? Put it on her waist here. Pray in tongues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then it's a family based, uh, it's a family based manipulation. She'll be free, she'll be free in the moment. Just focus. Focus yourself. Let the yoke break in the name of Jesus. Yes, where are the rest? Where are the rest? Ah, shake me, shake me, shake me, shake me, shake me, give me your hand. Si akombele ke so sakure, pa mi na si kopre sa ba na ba boko toni. Aha, yeah, you are out now. You are out. Can you shake me? Just shake me. of God to die. The only merchandise the Lord Jesus has given us is life. So I proclaim life! Life in the name of Jesus! Psycho monocopre sadika la haita. We banish that death. We banish it. We banish it. In the name of Jesus. We destroy it in your family. In the name of Jesus. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, it's time to pray. It's a season of life. We wage war over every death, every symptom of death. We wage war over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every limitation is taken away. Every dead position you contacted that is not of God, we overthrow it this morning. Cry. 
mosquito break na man de curia mas que tu foco masi reminai to posi en sacoria en dilato en camanche en casalabo en casquila toya y sa sa de pompe mante tosi cavando do bosato upon someone's umbilical cord and the person is being drawn from that long rope. Now, so what we will do is that we'll ask the Lord to release fire on that rope. This thing is, is tied to the person's umbilical cord. It's a ritual that was done using the person's umbilical cord when you were born. And ever since this invincible rope has been there. So we'll just undo it. I don't know the limitations that the rope has conferred upon you, but we'll undo all of that protocol this morning in the name of Jesus. And so Lord, we give you praise. I ask, Lord, that your fire be released on this rope. Let your fire be released on this rope. And let the covenant that was done using the umbilical cord at, at the bed of this individual. Let that covenant be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Now, ushers, you will notice a reaction. A reaction um, in the next 12 seconds. So when you see that reaction, it is the power of Life overwhelming death. Yes. So they've been living with it for a long time, but right now the Lord wants to destroy it. Can you be so kind, O oh, Usher, to put your hand on her umbilical cord just like this? All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Father, let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be so kind. Can you be so kind as to put your hand on the on this place? Now I think we need two female ushers for one person. Any other any other usher? Okay, sister, join them. Join. Help, help them. Put put your hand there on the call. And and begin to pray in tongues. Hey, there's still one. There's still one in the congregation. They see one. Father, that one in the congregation, I ask your God that your fire will descend, that your fire will be descend, that your fire will descend upon that one so that she or he can be delivered. So we neutralize the effect of that transaction. We destroy it over your life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we also remove every limitation that has come to you on the account of this transaction. We neutralize it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. So we name you free. We call you free. 
Now, can't you see this lady is not out now? She's not out. Put your hand there. Just pray, pray in the spirit. Yeah, put your hand on, on, on where, yeah, just there. And pray in the spirit. Can you put your hand there? No, don't, hey, don't run away. Yes, right there, right there. Destroy that link. Destroy the transaction. Destroy that link. Ah. 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 Listen. Now, before I talk to you, let me explain. Someone is desiring the anointing I'm carrying. You don't know that it comes with problem. The problem. No, wait. Don't desire it. Don't. It comes with too much problem. But if you don't mind being troubled, <laughs> because somebody is receiving it, that's why I'm feeling it. There's somebody receiving that oil. Let it be known to you that I told you that it comes with problem. It comes with problem. Okay, Lord. Since the person desires the oil, I ask that you begin to deposit it, deposit it, deposit it on that life, deposit it, deposit it in the name of Jesus, deposit it, deposit it. Deposit it. Deposit it. So that anywhere there is darkness. No, bring her, bring her. Come. Just shake me, shake me, shake me, shake me. Jesus. Yes, I hear there's a video we need to, if you, please, if it's possible, just be seated for, is it more than 10 minutes? All right, so, please just be seated. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wait, no, 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 wait. See, sister, come. Put it on that lady with jeans, yeah. 
and, and return my handkerchief. Yes, okay. Return my handkerchief. Uh, where are you? We need a video now. So we'll do a healing um, healing evening today. Healing. Healing this evening. Right? So if you have relatives that are sick, that are close by, you can bring them. If they are not close by, just load your phone and come with it. I'll ask you to call them. Then we'll send the healing power of God through um, the GSM network in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's called the Forge Building Project. Uh, amen. So we are going to have our own place in the name of Jesus Christ. The Forge. The, forge the Lord has been very gracious to all. The Lord has provided us a land here in Ojodu Bega. At the rate of While they are looking for audio, I want to come into covenant with you in a moment. I want to fight and wait off anything that is standing in the way of what God has told you, not what God has not told you. Right? And we are trusting God that there will be manifestations in the coming weeks that will surprise you. If don't worry, you don't need to believe it, don't worry. I know the authority from whence I'm talking from. Can we pray together? Can we agree in the spirit? Yes, Lord. In the, the Lord has provided unto the land. Christ, yes, I come and I join forces with the Holy Ghost. And here in Ojodu Bega. And God has been very gracious to us. The land came at the... Dismantled this morning. Let it be destroyed this morning. Let there be manifestation in the coming weeks. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, you may be seated. Okay. Oh, um, Okwari, I guess we'll do this in the evening. The audio is has been is lost. I can't find the audio. So please don't miss the healing service. We will be doing the work of dispensing. The work of dispensing will be going on. Take some time to go through your notes uh, in this conference. There is an initiative the Lord is putting together and it's orchestrate a separation so that the great divide between the holy and the profane will widening up and there will be no confusions. People that want to work with Satan will know how to find him. People that want to work with God we know how to find him. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Maybe we'll play the video. I don't know. Maybe in the evening service. When the audio is... The Lord has provided us a land here in Ojodu Bega. Um, the renovation...
converted to children, one can be converted to 